Hey guys, this is Scott's Garage and today it's going to be all about my drone. Um, sorry about the noise upstairs, we're under construction. Uh, yeah, so back to the drone. Uh, my drone is a CX-20, as you can see over here. And uh, I just want to show you guys all the mods I did to it. And uh, also to my transmitter and whatnot. So let me get you in close and uh, I'm going to show you. And then we're going to take it out for a test flight. Okay, first I extended my, my legs with a half inch PVC. I put a couple of uh, tie wraps with a little screw so it wouldn't slip up and down. Uh, it's pretty light so and uh, and since I gained about three inches of height the, the legs were kind of wobbly so I went in the back I just took a really thin wire I went from point A to point B over here that way it keeps it from spreading and it helps the front also. I can't put one on the front because of the camera but uh, one on the back does the job um, okay as far as prop okay 9443 um, I don't like the original props they're too small not enough lift whatever okay um, then I tried the uh, but I also have hold on I'll show you I also have some uh, car carbon fiber props there 9443 just the same but for some reason uh, uh, the aircraft actually becomes a little bit unstable with these I don't know why so then I bought the same same prop as the carbon fiber but in plastic light plastic and uh, I get the great lift and very stable so uh, they're on Amazon you get like eight uh, was it yeah you get eight of them for like ten bucks really cheap and uh, you get like two reds, two greens, and four whites. And of course, there's four counterclockwise and four clockwise. Okay. All right. Now next is my my gimbal. I kept the original plate on the bottom, and I put in some, uh, you know, motherboard. Uh, spacer uh, spacers for computers there I use those I use four of those I drill some holes and I put the gimbal to uh, bottom plate well top plate and then of course I use the, the uh, you know the regular mountain process and uh, it works fine and then I hook I put on the I put it on the gimbal the camera works fine and here is what I'm going to show you is um, the blue wire here okay it goes the top absolute left corner okay and uh, the on this the ground is on the outside so make sure you you connect your 12 volt here in a 12 volt port but your, that your red wire make sure it's on the inside okay and on the other side this is just for the uh, tilt of the camera up and down I didn't hook up anything else you know if we look at the camera straight, straight up it, it's also gonna be I don't know it's kinda hard to tell but anyways it's also top left right in the corner top left okay and now if I plug it in just plug in the gimbal here well plug in the uh, there we have it you see you see the camera follows and works perfectly and uh, anyways that's that so if you have any questions on how to mount or how to connect or what something wasn't clear just let me know oh I also move my GPS from in here to right over here 
and I covered the whole thing with a, a, sh uh, a double sheet of aluminum to shield it from any electronics down below and I seemed to have a whole lot better reception. Before my GPS would lock, it would take 2-3 minutes, now it takes like anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. So that's about it for the modification on this. Next is my uh, transmitter. Uh, I didn't do much modifications, but I did uh, mod the battery. Um, you know, double A batteries, I mean, it takes four, right? And I fly three, four times a day, you would go through batteries like crazy. So I just bought on Amazon a five cell uh, nickel metal hydrate five cell. And uh, I soldered the plug inside to match it, male and female, and I just plugged it in. So here's what I did I took a Dremel. Here, let me take out the battery first here. I just took out a, uh, I took the Dremel and I just cut the square here, you know, about the size of my battery, a little bit larger. Then I, I, I lined it with some uh, some foam. And uh, here we go. I got my connector, and uh, I got a five cell nickel metal hydride, 1600 milliamp, and uh, you know, I fly three, four times, and then I just give it a quick charge with my li LiPo balance charger. Now, that's the next thing I want to talk to you about. The, uh, the charger that this uh, Jason CX-20 comes with, I mean, it does a job, if you don't mind waiting, like, six seven eight hours for the battery to get charged so I recommend you go on Amazon and get you one of these um, so just a lipo charger 20 bucks then of course you need the power supply uh, I think that's another 10 bucks you know but for 30 bucks you got everything you need and you might you uh, XT60 connector um, you need also a charging wire TX60 which is just three dollars or something anyways I will link uh, those in my description down below um, anyways for 30 35 bucks you can charge and take care of your battery properly you know and this thing is very simple to operate. You choose how many milliamp you want to charge at, and uh, you just choose your settings. You plug in your balancer on the side, and it does everything for you. You press start, and voila. Half an hour later, your battery's charged. And when you got three batteries, you need that. Also, and this has a nickel metal hydrate that I can go to to charge my transmitter battery. So. It just does everything instead of having uh, different chargers. Uh, let's see, besides that, uh, anybody that don't have a, one of these little meters, get yourself a little meter. They cost, what, five bucks? A Harbor Freight, I think they're three ninety nine. dollars Sometimes they give them away for free. Just get one because you can check your voltage, your batteries, you can you know you can do testing you can check if you got continuity between two wires if you if you're troubleshooting you just need one of these when you're working in this stuff okay so if you one of these i definitely recommend it and uh, i also bought this little very very small prop balancer okay works pretty good so it's not a tall one where the, the prop can go all around. This one just is just sideways. It gives me a good idea. So this side is going down right now. So I'd have to put just a, you know, sand just two or three shots here and do it again. If it goes down again, I keep doing it until it stays in the middle. And then I just play around with it, make sure it doesn't move anymore. And it does the, it does the job, you know, another couple bucks. And, uh, all right, as far as my camera, I got a really, really cheap camera. 
Uh, the gimbal, I think I paid $53 for it. It's really the cheap one uh, for... Uh, it's really a cheap one for... The cheapest one of all is $53 and change or whatever. And the camera, I think I paid 60 bucks. It's a Vivitar camera. Uh, the model is uh, DVR 794 HD and it does the job. It's pretty good. Um, there's also Wi-Fi on it, but you, you don't really don't want to use uh, 2400 Wi-Fi when uh, you're on the same frequency as your drone because they're going to interfere with one another. If you really want to use Wi-Fi on your transmitter, you need uh, 5 gigahertz uh, transmitter for your camera. So look into that. They got all that stuff on uh, Amazon. But of course, uh, you're not talking sixty, a hundred and ten dollars for both. Now you're talking six, seven, eight hundred for both. So it's all in the budget, okay? So all said, uh, this drone cost me three hundred bucks. Um, it came with one battery. I bought two extra batteries with the gimbal and camera. So with all the little knickknacks I bought and everything else, it comes up to about five hundred bucks, and uh, I'm having a blast. I'm gonna go in the park right now. I'm not gonna go crazy because uh, it's, I live in California. It's a famous park, and uh, there's always a ton of people. So I'm just gonna just do it in front of me to, to test the camera and show you how the drone handles. But I'm not gonna go too high and do too crazy stuff because there's just too many people in the park. And uh, number one rule: watch your surroundings. And uh, when there's that many people. Uh, it's best not to fly at all. You wait. Usually I fly at night when there's nobody. And it's a lot more fun at night because you see the lights. And it's actually a lot easier at night with the lights. And during the day, while well, I just putt around. I just, you know, hover in front of me and tilt, you know, left and right. And go around in circles around me and whatnot. But now, I want to do that. I haven't... Uh, tested my uh, gimbal and nothing in the lift because now obviously this drone is probably a half a pound heavier so I want to go try that and uh, so we'll catch you guys at the park alrighty folks I'm at the park I'm just gonna turn on the battery so you can see the gimbal go back into place as you can see the gimbal straightened out and it's ready to go Tilt it back and forth. Seems to be working. So I guess I go left and right, and the uh, camera is compensating. So.